And I watched the police beating this man who I had seen was, you know, I, I didn't know him, I'd never spoken to the man, but he seemed to be a quiet and offensive person. Uh, and it, and it, it was this, it was the systematic manner of the way they beat him to death, it, because I can recall it, watching it and being stunned. Um, it was so systematic. It wasn't a frenzied attack, it was methodical, the way, the way they, they beat the man. And uh, I just looked at it and I thought to myself, this isn't, the way, this isn't that the way police behave. You know, this, this shouldn't be happening. And I began to ask questions and then within a short, a short relatively short time, within a couple of months, um, I had, it had become clear the nature of the state and what the state would do to suppress Catholics. And that's when I, um, I could, you could say I became radicalised at the age of 13, just turning 14. I remember the, f the first time I experienced the death was a f my mate, a friend of mine, his father. This was back about 1970, and he used to travel through a, a Protestant area, coming home from work on the bus. Well, the Lord stopped the bus, and they went on the bus and picked him out and shot him dead. And that was really, um, to us, that was, we were young at the time, nine or ten. And that was a shock to us. It's something so brutal. Because having the fact on is so close, you know. Where you hear things, it's abstract, you know what I mean? But, but that was my first time ever. I experienced somebody being killed, you know. And I remember he stayed in our house that night and the family were crying and it was a, a big dramatic situation for them. You know, that was one of my earliest memories. And I remember one time, and it was Saturday afternoon, uh, must have been about September 1969. Me and some of my friends were playing football and there was a, an attempted incursion by loyalists in the area that we lived in. And these guys ran past us with guns. And it was the first time ever I had saw, you know, people, civilians with guns. Um, and it was three civilians ran past me. I knew them very, very well. I didn't have masks on. There were men that came from the area and they ran past us with... Uh, uh, guns, and we sort of we stopped and went, Jesus, and their whole thing was they were so nonchalant that it was go ahead, just just continue playing there, boys, it'll be okay, you know, and you were you were sort of reassured by this that um, you weren't going to be attacked, and that if you were going to be attacked, that there was someone there to defend you, and this was the IRA. Yeah. As a young person, th things were pretty simplistic, in, in my opinion, from from where I was coming from. You know, I'm Marish, this is Ireland, and our country's been occupied by the British. Um, we don't want them here. They're not going to leave peacefully. You know, so that's where I stood. I had, there was no big moral decision about, you know, could I accept hurting or, or killing British soldiers? That, that wasn't a problem. Uh, I don't mean that flippantly because, you know, it's not nice to kill people, it's not nice to maim people. But when you're in a war situation, you're left with no alternative, you know. People have been fighting wars for years and years and years throughout the world. Um, and and that's, that's, sometimes it's the only method to bring about more, more moral change, you know. Um, so I had no big uh, moral decision to make about joining the RA. To, 